Good afternoon, fellow ruminators. Welcome back to another session, Rumination with Andrew. Thank you so much for joining as we are about to discuss a very important topical matter. And today we shall talk about the sudden deaths of teachers, right? It is uh, an alarming reality and something that the Jamaican society has to grapple with, the sudden passing of teachers within the educational sector. Now, in recent times, particularly since 2020, we have been hearing of sudden deaths of the nation's teachers. Now, we need to understand that teachers interact with young minds, with young people, because most of the teachers who are dying actually are coming from elementary, primary school to, uh, to high school, right? I have not heard of any deaths of tertiary institutions, teachers, those who are teaching at university level, I have not yet heard. Perhaps there are, but I have not heard. The fact of the matter is that this is something that we have to deal with because if students are interacting with teachers on a daily basis and they're constantly hearing of the passing, the sudden loss of their teachers or illness, not only loss, they're not only dying, but they're also becoming disabled. And last week, I uh, saw online on YouTube a video, an interview done with a former teacher. I hope she will return. Right now, she is totally disabled and she's not able to perform her duties, but she had to resign her position due to her injury. Not sure what is happening, but what is um, afflicting her is actually a disease that is rare. And she is trying to keep abreast. And she's only 37, I believe. And most of the teachers that we have been reading about, yes, are within that same age group between their high 20s, right? 27 to, you know, mid third, mid 40s. And this is a time when teachers generally have the most productive, um, they're at the most productive stage or phase of their lives, right? That is the time that they should have vigorous constitution. And I'm talking about the physical constitution right now. I do not understand why the powers that be, particularly in the Ministry of Education, are not doing vigorous research of work, right? To ensure, to find out, to interrogate what really is happening in the system. Because we can't just have our teachers die and that's nothing. And, you know, one of the things that is very, very much evident in Jamaica is the fact that we do not like to do research. And if we do do research, we do not do it um, in terms of attacking the root causes of the problem that we are investigating. So we hear that the teachers are stressed and that they're dying largely of stress. And that could be, but stress has always been a factor for teachers for centuries. And we have not been seeing the sudden deaths of teachers as we are seeing it in recent times, particularly, as I said, after 2021. What is happening? Is there something in the environment? Has Have children become much more violent? And perhaps they have. Is the workload much more strenuous than it used to be before 2021? What really is happening in the Jamaican education system? Somebody needs to be responsible and somebody needs to let us know what is really happening. So this is what I, I see some articles here mentioned in the Gleaner and one in which came from Loop. Well, let me not begin with the Gleaner, but this is Loop. This is an online newspaper. It says five teachers die in six days. Five teachers die in six days, right? And that was written, what was the date here? Um, on May the 17th, 2022, right? That's a that's quite a number of teachers to die, right? In six days. And remember now that when we the teachers die because they interact directly with our children, it means therefore that our children are left in trauma, right? They are left traumatized. And that is adding to, it's compounding the problem of the high homicide rate that we have in Jamaica. Right, because not only are they seeing crime and violence at home, but they are going to witness not violence in the sense of somebody killing their teachers, but the fact of the matter that the teachers, you know, are dying suddenly and they become ill and then they have to leave the classroom. Remember now that children 
become attached to their cheap teachers. So whether they are very ill and they can't return to, to, to the job, it will affect the child psychologically and in many other ways, right? And if they die, it compounds the problem. And, you know, I remember early on this year that there was a teacher at the Montego Bay uh, based institution, Cornwall, Cornwall uh, College, right? A teacher, a Spanish teacher, I think she was only 42 years old who died suddenly, right? And the boys were left traumatized at Cornwall College, right? So we have to try to find out what really is the cause. We can't just say it's stress. And I also see the Minister of Health or the, not the Minister of Health, but the Minister of Education, the, the, um, through the JTA, that's the Jamaica Teachers Association, letting teachers know that they are responsible for their health. And that is true. But beyond that, we've got to also find out what are the contributing factors to the sudden illnesses and deaths of our teachers, right? That is the responsible thing to do. Now, I also would encourage teachers to be your own doctors and to make sure that you know your bodies. Don't allow the medical fraternity to tell you what you should and should not take, right? Be mindful of your own health and allow your bodies to speak to you because we have a time where the government will tell us that we are responsible for our health and yet still they will do things and create mandates and stuff like that that might not necessarily be in harmony with the advice that they're giving to us, right? So it's very important that teachers allow their bodies to speak to them. And when they're overly stressed, they need to speak. They need to get some counseling, right? And principals need to listen to their teachers because teaching is a very stressful job. It's a very ungrateful job also, right? Because people don't understand the role plays that played by teachers and also particular in the context of Jamaica where teachers have to be mothers and fathers and counselors and you know in many ways fulfill roles that they are not trained or paid to do right and they often take on tasks or tasks that they are also not paid it's not a part of their job description so to a great extent teaching in Jamaica is an ungrateful right, on thankful profession. And teachers need to take care of themselves. Now, that was interesting that we said we had how many teachers? We had five teachers die in six days. And it says five teachers have died in six days, a development that has led the Minister of Education and Youth, Fable Williams, to express deep sadness while extending condolences to the immediate families and school communities of the deceased. Right. So she's all expressing that, but she has to go beyond that. Right. And there has to be some form of investigation into these frequent occurrences. Right. Because they are happening quite frequently in the system. I think it is becoming might not reach at an alarming stage, yet, but it is becoming alarming. Right. We are seeing we're witnessing too many teachers in the system dying for unknown reasons and not only dying, but becoming suddenly ill, contracting rare diseases that in some cases we have never heard about, including the medical fraternity, right? They, including the medical doctors who are trained. And if they do not know how to treat these diseases because they are rare and they're sudden, it's going to create also more difficulty in the system. Now in the Observer, and this article was written on March 24, 2024, Half a primary school teacher suffers stroke, dies five days later. And this guy looks very, very young. His name is Jermaine Jones, right? A young man. And it says here, the staff and students of the Harvard Tree Primary School are mourning the loss of physical education teacher Jermaine Jones, who died Friday evening after he reportedly suffered a stroke a few days earlier. Right. So that is something that we have to be aware of. We are seeing heart disease, heart attacks. Their people are dying in their sleep. Right. What is really happening in our educational system? And I think that more light needs to be shed on this reality. It's something that we have to deal with. I know that we do not like to confront our realities, but this is one that we have to confront because this is affecting the educational landscape. 
as it were, and we've got to do something about it. And we've got to study and see what really are the contributing factors. Now, this is another online, AntiguaBreakingNews.com. And this here is saying Jamaican teacher dies of COVID-related illness, right? So it might be COVID. It could be something else. It might be the environment. It could be stress, right? Could be the murder rates, the high homicide rates, and the teachers are stressed. Could be the, their workload, right? Because teachers have to do a lot, right? Particularly those who are preparing students for exams and so forth. They have to do a lot. And our schools are plagued with violent students, right? With violent children coming from violent homes, right? So that also could be adding to the stress of teachers more so than what you had in former times. Now, but this says Jamaican teacher dies of COVID-related illness. The, the Jamaica College for Family is mourning the loss of a member of their staff who succumbed to illness. The diseased, or the deceased rather, is Giovanni Baxter, a teacher of visual arts and the grade nine year supervisor, right? So he just died suddenly. And this man also looks like he was in his upper 20s or early 30s, right? Very young to be dying, right? And um, seems to me that he died of COVID-related um, illness, right? Something that needs to be explored. So we know that we're living in some very, very interesting times, but we also have to be responsible. And as I've said to you, our children are at risk when they see teachers passing or becoming ill. And my heart was touched last week when I, you know, um, watched the interview of this young miss, this 37 year old former teacher, where she's still a teacher, but she's no longer practicing, right? Uh, because she is in, you know, an infirmary as it were, because, you know, she's in a nursing home because she can't help herself. She's almost crippled, right? She almost can't walk. She she does some walking, but, you know, she is suffering like the disease from which she's suffering is affecting her spine, right? And it's like her, it's an autoimmune disease in which it seems like her immune system is attacking her spine. I think that's what she said right, on the video. It's a very rare disease that the doctors themselves are studying, right? So more power to the doctors. We hope that they'll come up with a solution because I think that, you know, it's very disheartening to see a young lady at 37 who has so much potential. And based on the comments that were left, her her um, her students were wishing her good health. It seemed like she was an excellent teacher and she is missed from the classroom. Remember now that we are having a deficiency in teacher education in Jamaica. Many of our teachers are migrating, immigrating to other countries, and we need to have our teachers in excellent. Those who are remaining on the island need to be in excellent health, right? If they are going to um, discharge the function of their duties in an effective manner. Now, in the, um, in the Gleaner also, we have here published June 12th, Sunday, June 12th, 2022. The article is titled, Another Clarendon School Mourns as Jamaica Loses 10 Teachers in One Month, right? The Jamaica lost 10 teachers in one month, right? And this would have been June. This article was written on June 12th, 2022. The Pleasant Valley Primary and Infant School in Clarendon is mourning the passing of Yasmin Gordon, the 10th grade teacher to die in Jamaica since May 11th. Gordon, who worked in the infant department, died on Saturday morning. Seems like she also died suddenly. Oh no, she had been ailing for some time, the Gleaner understands, right? So she had been ailing um, for some time. It is never business as usual when we lose a colleague, a fellow educator who is making a difference in the lives of our students, Richardson said, right? So. This is not something that is rare, right? It is something that is becoming more frequent as the days go by. And I think that the Ministry of Education, along with the Ministry of Health, these two organizations have to get on board to get a pulse, right, of really what is happening in the education sector in terms of the sudden deaths and the sudden illnesses of our Jamaican teachers. Many teachers are suffering. And what is the government doing 
to help to assist our young teachers who have become disabled. And I will not talk about the joke that you call it, right? Because nobody wants to talk about that. It is a silence and the government continues as if it's business as usual. And that is why I'm encouraging our teachers to take their health into their own hands. And I'm also imploring the government, right? To not foist medications on teachers if they do not want them, or if they do not consider these medications to be appropriate for their own health benefits and needs. Very important that the government understands that because at the end of the day, the government will have to suffer the consequences, will have to bear the consequences, right? The financial consequences. And also we also have the educational deficit, you know, among other things, when we foist things upon people, um, things that perhaps they would not have taken or would not have considered had they not been forced to do so. Right. So it's something that the government needs to do and further research needs to be undertaken. Right. And we need to find out if something's in the environment, if teachers are also traumatized by the high homicide rates and home life. I, I don't know something or, you know, could be their salaries are not um, helping them to sustain their basic, you know, life needs. You know, I don't know. Whatever it is, we have to do more research to find out. It could be some toxin, as it were, in the environment. What is, what are the factors which are contributing to the sudden illnesses, rare diseases, right? And the, at the end of the day, the sudden deaths of Jamaican teachers, something that we need to think about, something that we need to explore, because as I said before, our children's education, right, um, is at stake, and we have to protect our children, right, because they are being attacked at all different levels, right, and we have to protect them because the teachers are, you know, many times their homes are not the best place, and they find solace in teachers, and teachers are like second parents, so when they, these teachers become very ill or they die, they really affect the lives of children and or young people. Thank you so much for joining. I hope to see you in another video when I shall publish. Please remember now to like and to share and to subscribe. See you in the next one. Bye.